Hi guys, today we'll be talking about a structural characterization technique known as electron backscatter diffraction, or EBSD. This technique can be used to determine grain morphology and crystallographic orientation. EBSD utilizes the same equipment as an SEM, however, the way that images are gathered differs from standard SEM analysis. As the name implies, EBSD utilizes an electron beam to probe the specimen. This probe is focused directly on the crystalline sample. However, instead of laying flat, the sample is tilted at a 70 degree angle to the horizontal. This 70 degree angle tilt allows more electrons to be scattered from the surface. When the electrons hit the sample, they will enter and diffract along the crystallographic planes that satisfy Bragg's law. The diffracted electrons interfere constructively to form a pattern of intersecting bands that represent the reflecting planes at that location in the sample. These bands are known as a Kikuchi pattern. The Kikuchi bands can tell you information about the structure of the lattice because the symmetry of the crystal lattice is reflected in the symmetry of the Kikuchi pattern. The width and intensity of the bands is directly related to the spacing of the atoms in the crystallographic plane, and the angles between the bands are directly related to the angles between crystallographic planes. The beam will trace along the surface of the sample, gathering information about the structure of the lattice at each point. Wherever the Kikuchi pattern changes, the beam has entered a new grain with a new orientation. Compared to the traditional SEM techniques which use a pivoting beam, the EBSD uses a stationary beam to probe grains within a polycrystalline sample. For this reason, the spot size can be decreased, which results also in a decrease in interaction volume of the electron beam with the sample. The interaction volume is two orders of magnitude smaller with the EBSD technique compared to traditional SEM where the sample is flat. To interpret the orientation of each grain from the Kikuchi pattern, a hue transform is taken of each Kikuchi band. Each pair of Kikuchi lines is transformed into single points whose location can be identified more accurately than pairs of lines. The width between each pair of bands, as well as the angle between each set of planes, is then calculated and compared to large databases of information to determine the planes. The zone axes are then calculated by taking the cross product of each plane intersection. It is common to see this information represented in, on an EBSD grain map. Each orientation is assigned a color. Grains are mapped by color according to the zone axes identified using the hue transform. You are left with an image that has an exact map of each grain within the sample, as well as the orientation of each grain. This can be used to determine average grain orientation of the entire sample and extrapolate mechanical properties from that. However, this do method does have drawbacks. Sample preparation must be performed with extreme care. For most samples, fine surface polishing, electropolishing, and chemical etching are options for getting rid of deformation and inconsistencies on the surface. For thin films, ion etching can be used. This is very hard to do on thin film specimens because you have to remove most of the sample to remove deformation and contamination. In addition, there is a very narrow window where the sample tilt is ideal for generating an image with high quality. As the sample tilt increases, the image quality increases only if the exposure time also decreases. EBSD cannot be used to deduce, deduce grain orientation <laughs> from materials that have a very small grain size, below 25 nanometers. Spatial resolution falls more than one order of magnitude behind that of traditional SEM due to the sample tilt. The elongated projection of the beam on the surface of the sample causes forward scattering resulting in spatial resolution that is three times worse along the surface compared to the beam direction. Lastly, the material state is very important. As the degree of order decreases within the diffraction interaction volume, so does the pattern quality. Therefore, deformed materials produce more diffuse patterns. Amorphous materials will produce no pattern whatsoever. Due to this limitation, EBSD is best used for metals, alloys, and geological samples where strict geometric orientation is maintained. For this reason, it is often used to compare annealing techniques and understand crystallographic growth mechanisms. Thank you, and we hope you learned a lot.